you are now a recording artist and you have a number of albums out there. I guess, was it Jackson Brown who first brought you into the studio? <coughs> or how did that come about? Well, uh, it came about, you know, I spent a lot of time as a political activist. Right. And then for me as an individual, I came to understand that that wasn't, that identity didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Right, because it limited my perception of reality. Because I was, per I was participating in reality from the perception of a political activist, and no matter how righteous my activism, it, what, no, no matter how righteous my cause, I'm limiting my ability to see because I'm only seeing as a political activist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that has its own limitations because I think there are larger understandings that as human beings we need to be able to experience. Maybe, all right. Yeah. So in that whole, as all that's going on through my head and consciousness, I started writing. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I um, started writing, and then, yes, Jackson uh, took me in. I was kind of like a fugitive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Jackson took me in and into the world of music mm -hmm. while I was writing. And then at some point I got the idea, well, I want to put my lines with music, but as spoken word. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so then I wandered off into that to see where it would go, and here I am. I remember it was must have been more than 20 years ago. I first came across a cassette of yours. It was uh, this is in El Salvador. But this is in El Salvador. Yes. Right. It was really a powerful. Was that one of your first ones? It was the fourth album. Fourth album. Uh, we made tribal voice, which was the poetry with the the tribal music. Uh huh. And then. Three years passed, and then I met Jesse Ed Davis, and with Jesse Ed Davis, I made Graffiti, Ma aka Graffiti Man, which right. is now with the electric music. Right. And then we made Heart Jump Bouquet, and then we made, but this is El Salvador. I think in 1987 we recorded that. Right. We like that tune, Grass Fire, man. Grass yeah. Fire, yeah. My DNA needs THC. My DNA awesome needs tune, THC. Man. <laughs> right. Well, reality. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. It does. Be real it's sometimes. amazing how the science <laughs> is backing that up more and more every day. We often talk about it here, how, you know, just in, what was it, 93, they discovered that uh, our bodies have this whole endogenous cannabinoid system where uh, we have these artificial cannabinoids that kind of modulate the rest of the, the endocrine system, the body's hormones and everything. It's, well, you so know, I, I think we do need THC. Yeah, no, in fact, mother's milk has endogenous THC well, in No, it. that's why my DNA needs THC. Yeah. There's a reason, right, that it gets yeah. said. Uh, but you know what I'm interested in, I mean, in a way, is like, because what you're saying about the, this, see, I think that, what is this, cannabis sense? Yeah, cannabis common uh, well, sense. Well, see, what makes can cannabis common sense to me is I think we really need to start putting some efforts in to the legalization of industrial hemp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we put as much effort in energy into the legalization of industrial hemp as we put into hemp that we can smoke. Mm -hmm. If we put an equal amount of energy into that, because that serves, an, it, it meets a larger objective of alternative energy, because yeah. I mean, I, you know, I won't make the speech, but we so make the thing. fuels and the food and all this stuff, all right, and it's, it's you know, and, and, I, and I have this lingering curiosity in the back of my consciousness, as active as the cannabis movement is in its various levels, Mm -hmm. and perceptions, right, that I, I, I don't quite get why more energy isn't put into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because it would save the farmers and all. I mean, yeah. there's so much that could be, and everybody's toxic, and, and people are starting to sit back now. The, the political system's starting to talk about, well, in order to meet our oil needs, all right, in order to meet our oil needs, we'll do offshore drilling. Mm -hmm. You know, and people are, see, and, but, and I don't see it coming, you know, in order to meet some of these energy needs, Industrial yeah, hemp. hemp. Yeah. We often talk about this it, study out of Notre Dame University in 1975. It's published in a magazine called The Midlands Naturalist. And it's uh, feral hemp in southern Illinois. According to that study, an acre of hemp will make four tons of hemp seed. And four tons of hemp seed will make 300 gallons of biodiesel fuel or oil. So, so, so to me, those That's, of us who, who come from the hemp community See, this should be the, the alternative form of energy that we're putting up. If yeah. we put as much effort into to getting medicine for the earth as we put into getting it for ourselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see, we have the energy to do it. It's just the, the focus and the consciousness. 
-hmm. Because what I see as the imbalance, we, we're, we're talking about the benefits of, of hemp or marijuana sure. medicinally, all right, for us. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it also serves the same medicinal benefit for the earth. Mm -hmm. you know, and it does, but we're yeah. not putting an equal effort into what it does for, us, uh, for the earth as we're putting in to what it does for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and because what I, I don't see it really happening in, in a, anywhere to a large degree, but what we really need to have is we really need to, need to have a stimulation of the, ener uh, of the energy, consciousness, been the energy. Here, John, our theme was industrial hemp, man. We, we yeah, had see, a serious be, emphasis yeah. going see, on, man, be, on uh, yeah, alternative energy. 